Well, today I plan on doing some compression tests. But uh, I brought all my stuff over to the greenhouses because we had a drastic temperature change from uh, yesterday to today. Right now it is actually in the low 70s. And yeah, it's December 27th, two days after Christmas. And I am in a short sleeve shirt. My, uh, my uh, formal age shirt here, American Classic. I like it. I got it at got it when I went on vacation but um, it is literally in the low 70s here I think we might even set a record high for the year and um, so um, when that happened uh, the garage floor and everything in it uh, was still cold as the temperature rose and now everything is just covered with water uh, and uh, that's why my fluorescent light bulbs wouldn't start in the garage so I didn't have any light so I brought them over here to the greenhouse and we're just going to do our compression tests here. I hope my battery charger slash uh, jumper is okay because it was soaked with water too. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll see what, what happens here and hopefully everything's alright. But that's why I'm in the greenhouses right now. Well the warm weather sure feels nice but then when winter moves back in it brings a cold front with it. and. I got a tornado watch in effect currently and we're supposed to get some really high winds as this cold front pushes through. If you can if you can hear it, there's uh, rain falling on the plastic roof of this greenhouse and it can get very loud, but currently it's raining very lightly and even then it sounds kind of loud. But uh, we'll do what we can do in here. We're still nice and dry as long as power stays on. And then again, if it went out, our backup generator in there would kick in and handle everything. But uh, I think my battery charger is working all right. I tested it. I got this light here to make sure I got power being supplied while I crank these engines to do the compression test. Uh, I'm going to let them warm up first, so we're going to start them up. And being 70 degrees, they should fire up a lot easier than they did when they were cold. So, uh, let's see. Let's engage the charger here. Let's uh, go with 12 volts, uh, 2 amps and 12 volts for this one because it doesn't pull much. Alright, while that one's warming up, let's get this one going here. One, two, three primes. Engage the charger. Turn the key. These, you have to hold this bar down while you try to start it. So let's try it again. I forgot all about that. Hold the bar down and turn it. Oh, yeah. That one fired up good. Need a strap or something to hold this down. Okay, uh, no, I'm not jump starting it, but I'm just holding the bar down here so this engine stays on. Actually, running pretty good. This one's ran probably enough, but come on, let this one catch up to it. Okay, they've been running a few minutes now. Let's shut them down. Eh, it's still raining. Shoot. It'll interfere with the sound a bit, but oh well. Pocket my keys here. Actually, no, because I'm going to be cranking these things. Alright, now I'm going to take the spark plugs off. And then uh, hook up my compression tester, and that's when we'll resume the video. Okay, here's the compression test of this engine. <clears throat> Got the spark plug out, full throttle, and here's the gauge. We'll go ahead and crank the engine, and we'll see what we get. as much 
is that other one. A little bit more than 50. All right, let's release it and try it again. Yep, same thing. Now we'll let it go for about a minute and see how well it holds its compression. Well, it's been about a minute, and wow, the pressure has dropped a lot more than the other one did. Down from 50 to almost 35. So, that one's definitely a better engine. This one doesn't have as much compression, but... That's the compression on the two 6.75 horsepower, 190 cubic centimeter Briggs engines. Overhead valve versus non-overhead valve. So there you have it.